What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dickie Dines podcast. We have a very, very fun episode for you guys today. The entirety of Greystone, <laughs> the official winners of Musician Mansion Season 1. Yeah, yeah. Say it again. The official winners yeah, of Musician Mansion Season girl. 1. Now, we did a podcast with uh, the entirety of Skyline. The runner-ups. And runner the entirety of Grasshopper, which uh, then we realized, you know, we need to do with the entirety of Greystone. We also have done. an individual podcast with Nick and Justin. Mm -hmm. on our channel, but I think that the vibe and the dynamic of having you all in one sitting is, uh, is a lot of fun. Yeah, so much different dynamic, much different dynamic. And that, you know, talked about some stuff that we have not talked about ever publicly on mm -hmm. the podcast about the show, about girth, about length, about time consumption, lots of girth and lots of length. Before we get into that, today's uh, episode is sponsored by pretty good branding. Wow. Which is my manager's printing and branding agency, and they print all the Dickie Dines merch and do all the Scion merch. Wow. Uh, pretty good branding. They deliver high-quality printing services that are designed to make your brand stand out, whether you're a retailer, event exhibitor, reseller, corporate entity, or an individual. They do it all. One of the unique services they offer is backdrop printing. If you're in a band and you need to do a backdrop so people at the show know who you are, uh, you know, and you want to stand out, uh, PGB has uh, printed backdrops for bands like Pierce the Veil, um, Ask Alexandria, MXPX, Story of the Year, many more. They're legit. Uh, so whether you're looking for merchandise to sell at shows or branding print services like tent tops, table throws, backdrops, flags, etc. Pretty Good Branding has you covered. Head over to prettygoodbrand.com for a quote using the link in the description below. Also, if you mention the Dickie Dines show, you will receive 10% off your next order. So don't wait. Help your band stand out now with Pretty Good Branding. Thank you, Pretty Good Branding, for sponsoring today's podcast really do appreciate you also we have a patreon that's in the link in the description below if you want to support us directly and help keep the lights on help keep feeding our camera guys kids uh you can go to our patreon you can uh, donate up to a dollar or if you want more perks you can donate up to like i think the 500 is the highest one that it goes to which is insane but some pretty good perks with that one and if we get to 250 active members on the patreon me and austin will drop a single Jeez. we will do a we will drop a song for you guys we're as, so close. as an incentive. We are. I think we're like 215, 220. We need like 30 more people. So it's very close to having a potential new song. And uh, yeah. And we also have merch link in the description below. So those are our uh, shout outs that would help us out a lot if you want to continue to support us. Without further ado, let's get in to the Greystone podcast. Yeah. They're great. They're gravy. What's up, everybody? Greystone. What is up, Greystone? The, the sickest fucking band. You can say it. The winners. The winners. <laughs> you can say it. Musician Mansion Season 1 Greystone Reunion. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We did a, a little podcast with Justin and Nick, but we then decided to do... We got the whole crew. We got the whole crew. We decided to do... Uh, yeah. one all of Sky Limit and one with Grasshopper. We figured, you know what? Let's get all of Greystone. Let's also get Dude, all. Of speaking Greystone. of Grasshopper, did you say their fucking PR bad move, adding the V to their name on everything? The, Nobody could find them. The like, grasshopper. Oh, no. Comments of the podcast. Wait, they're trying to true cult it. How are we? How do I find their song? <laughs> how, what is Grasshopper? <laughs> Um, so Greystone, your hit single, it's Greystone. It's Greystone, yeah. Greystone, your hit single, Bleed the Fifth, is getting rave reviews all across the internet for its brutal, slamming riffs and heavy dual vocals from frontman Austin Dickey and Justin Bonnets. I have been seeing a lot of comments comparing it to early two thousands deathcore. Or heavy, yes. uh, heavy garage core, if you will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I heard best local band a lot. Yeah, best local. <laughs> um, this 
kind of leads me into my first question. Do you think that early 2000s metalcore and deathcore is making a comeback? And if so, will Greystone be leading the way? <laughs> it never went anywhere, baby. Yeah. <laughs> my space for That's life. <laughs> Dude, and yeah. Harry Styles Stan says that too. You know it's fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing a lot of comments. People were saying this reminds me of like old school Doctor Acula. This is yeah, like, I saw Doctor Acula. Yeah, that was, was a funny one. This is like the old school deathcore that like used to be super hype. Mm-hmm. That got me like into the genre. Yeah, it was the the time where people were just figuring out how to play their instruments, so yeah. they were just like reckless. You know, right. was, there was just like so much emotion because people were like just hitting their shit and that's kind of what ours was like dude we got five hours let's just hit the guitars and make noise was that something that just happened supernaturally i know nick that i assume that you kind of took a little bit charge of the songwriting like when you got into the room was that just something that just happened or were you purposely trying to go for that just like dirty old school sound yeah i mean I knew when we had the group makeup, I was like, okay, well, we need to make the Dino Boys fucking run with each other. <laughs> and just, you know, like I was like, that's happening no matter what. So then, you know, meeting Damien and Paula for the first time too, I was like, okay, what's kind of the vibe here? Because like I, I was ready to do like a whatever core banger. It's core at the end. I'm happy with it probably. Sure. Like if it was more of a metal core thing and like do all like third harmonies and shit like that, you know. But then, um, then we started hanging out and then Paula just had like this slammy riff and I was like, I, this is what's happening, I guess. And we're just going to kind of <laughs> like, like, this is obviously the route. So sure. Like dun, 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 dun. So I kind of committed to that. And then Damien was like, okay. <laughs> 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 and then, and then we were like, let's just, just go with it. And if we're going to make dummy, like just make dummy, like <laughs> fucking have fun. And it's less thinking too. So we were, I was like, that's the way like instantly within like probably 10 minutes we figured it out like it was quick. just have some fun. Yeah, Keep it make something <clears throat> yeah because then we can have more fun writing it and making it and then we can i knew that like we were just all support role for the 80 carries the fucking dino man anyways so let's i was just like let's the just T-Rex do the perfect and the velociraptor yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i knew like let's just play support at that yeah. point um and then i knew paula was crazy shredder so i was like okay let's just she'll have a solo in there and then, you know, I'll just lay back and just play the rhythms and Damien will will play, you know, sick, sick, sick blasties or slipknot beats and fucking just do that and let everyone else kind of do their thing. <laughs> this, the slipknot beats. I remember so many times we'd, we'd end a riff and then he'd be like, what if we did like a slipknot part right here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, Nick, you were the backbone and then they were the ribs. They kind of... You know, you kind of held it together with the structure and they came in and they, you know, did everything else. Uh, Paula, I know that you don't like clean vocals. <laughs> yeah. Was there was there ever a moment when you guys were writing that you may have thought, let's do clean vocals? Or were you guys just like no. screams? Not even for a second. No. Not even for a second. I feel like, come on, guys. Yeah. Like, we have just you saying it now is the first time that thought has entered all five of our brains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It yeah. wasn't even like considered a little bit. It was just no, like, yeah. look at the group we have. Why would we waste our time with Queens? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Justin, you're a great clean singer. So I was just wondering if that had ever come up in conversation no of, you know, let's way. do a clean part. No. Okay. Not with that song. Like the way the song was going. Like the only place you could have put Cleans was like the slipknot part. And we're like, let's do a guitar solo there instead. Right. <laughs> right. Like the guitar sing. Maybe we should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, was curious about that. Dun, 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 dun. I was like, we're committed. <laughs> right. Hell yeah. So, Damien, you used to play in a, some pretty heavy bands. Uh, m- most notably, Prestige was your band mm-hmm. that you a long time. Heavy, hardcore, kind of deathcore band. But uh, more recently, not so much playing in that type of music. But now you get thrown and thrust it into this massively heavy deathcore band that is honestly very probably for you reminiscent of the style you used to play in your old band 10 years ago. Cause that's the style that was big back then. Right. It was how yeah. for you uh, coming back into that from like your childhood. Was it just like riding a bike super easy? Did you have any struggles? What was that like for you? I mean, it definitely came pretty naturally after like I saw who I was paired with and I was like, because, yeah, like, played heavy, hardcore stuff back in the day. It had been 
shit, like 10 years or so, I played pop music, you know, for quite a right. while. So like just getting thrown into that, I was, I, I remember even being like, damn it, Jared, you paired me with freaking <laughs> just the heaviest of heavies. <laughs> So, like, right, like Steven Seagal coming back with uh, ex Navy SEAL retired. Like I got one more job in me. I guess I gotta, <laughs> gotta make things happen, man. Oh, Damien, you came out of retirement because you're not really a content creator. But have have you found yourself recently playing music more or feeling more inspired to play and write music, uh, like heavier music, since your time at the mansion after being put with all these guys? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been jamming a lot more stuff, even just like listening to a lot more heavy music, just kind of getting back into it, been like, Oh, I miss this. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you gaslight me into thinking you hated this type of music? <laughs> so all of us. <laughs> oh, I just thought that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. The whole Apparently. time I thought you hated it and I was like, Yeah, like Damien keeps saying he doesn't even like this type of music. I'm like, He's good at it. I don't get it. <laughs> it was uh it was all just a big ploy because i hadn't played it in so long i was like man what if i suck <laughs> so i was like yeah I, I don't like this that was his like <laughs> that was his confidence blanket to just be like yeah i mean i wouldn't play this anyway so of course i'm bad you know like yeah exactly I'm, like, I'm thinking he played in deathcore bands for 10 years like what is he because i heard about your gaslight and then you were telling people that like you 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 burned your legs or something oh, man. Like, you're I your own own band the whole time yeah i think so yeah found that out in the podcast that that was a lie <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i'm just having fun with it yeah it for sure solid. <laughs> There was there was quite a bit of gaslighting going on with it's Greystone because you had Austin <laughs> who was gaslighting everybody, and then you, uh, Austin, and Nick were having this like kind of competitive beef. Oh going yeah, on I, I wish bit. I wish the the passport bit got into the Dude. final. That was such a good. That was the best. There. That was the closer, no, we, we, we had so so many things we were trying to cram in. Oh, <laughs> real passport. Rivalry. I was scared you were actually going to take it. <laughs> You're not going home. <laughs> he was. He was like, "What if he doesn't give it back? I'm going to be stuck here." Yeah, I I, I tw quickly took photos of each page of it. So if I ever need you for something, I'll... <laughs> just in case. When I need my Andy Sizik uh, feature, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll bust out the blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? You just got, you guys are just having fun. I know. Just... I think I just was doing a character the first day and I was just like, I specifically started talking shit about Nick because he went to bed early and I was oh, right, like, right, right. knocked on my ass, bro. And then, <laughs> and then it just became from that. I think Nick was like rebuttaling in his and then I was just doubling down. Yeah. Was did you hear the, the gas? I got Lauren for like the first two or three days because I was, every time she would like walk by, I'd go in the hallway and bark. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> And she's like, I swear to fucking God, there's a dog here. Did somebody bring a dog? And I was like, I, I keep hearing that. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably why. Because after we left, I got a message from the host of the castle that was like, there was a dog. There's like dog hairs and we're charging you extra for a dog. Oh, I did bring a dog hair bag. So that could have been, that was my bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, around. I literally she wanted to charge me $500 to clean up dog mm -hmm. hair because there was a dog in the house and I literally responded and I was like you cannot prove that mm -hmm. that is the case and I'm not paying you that and then I ended up having to go through like the support and then I ended up not having to pay it but I was just like there was no dog in the house yeah, but there was it was you they should pay me $500 which is such a good dog impression there was also another dog in the house not many people know this but the original name for Greystone was going to be what slam, dog. slam, slam dog? dogs dogs <laughs> so there were dogs in the house <laughs> who came up with that name and why did you guys why did you guys end up going Greystone instead of slam dogs uh, I do okay. I think I like I, I didn't mean to, but I think I tricked everybody. I didn't. I, it was not on purpose. But I, when I brought Greystone, they were like, "Oh, it's like the perfect generic, like metalcore name." Yeah. Uh, I, none of them realized that was the name of the castle. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, yeah. I was like, you know, it's supposed to be because our song's about like the castle, so yeah. it'd be kind of a cool. We were like and this close to Greystone or to Slam Dogs. Yeah. And then yeah. Austin had his phone out and he's going off the names and he goes, what about Greystone? And everyone just went oh, at the same time. So we were like, that's gotta be it. Well, it's the name of our hometown, right? That's why it's hard. It's true. Yeah. We were, yeah. Greystone yeah. capital. That's yeah. our Parkway drive moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
I like Slam Dogs. I think Slam Dogs would have been a great name. Yeah, too. that's our Instagram group. Name. That's, yeah, that'll be the EP. That'll be the EP. It'll be called Slam Dogs. Yeah, oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Slam Dogs for life. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Nick, I remember being on your stream uh, probably about nine months ago or so, and you said the N word. You you said please. <laughs> God damn it, Austin. It's by the way. No, was too Nick, Nick, you said on your stream, please come back to making content and make things interesting again. And I just have to ask, did I succeed in making things interesting for you? <laughs> you guys can... You... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, All right. Um, Paula, I have a question for you. Oh my god. You, you go. Paula. Come, come to Hi. Brazil. <laughs> Will you come <laughs> to Brazil? No. Uh so you came all the way from Brazil and you're now currently in Canada. What has been the most exciting thing about your new life, your new location, uh, with the one and only Mr. Nocturnal? And how has life been in Canada compared to Brazil? Oh God, it's everything different. And also like being with Nick every day, like we writing songs, uh, making some crazy, like different music also like beats. Yeah, making, like, <laughs> electronic crappy. That's nice. Yeah, That's awesome. Every day is very like oh, cool. fun. And comparing to Brazil, maybe like a few here is a little bit more easier than in Brazil, like completely easier. Like I've been here for like three months and what I grow in three months, it delays for me growing in Brazil like 10 years. Oh, wow. Jesus. Yeah, it's insane. Well, like congratulations. Numbers. That's really cool. So are you guys going to be <laughs> releasing any new music soon or... <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do we do we bleed the fifth on this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean we're like working on just like random fun shit together, kind of, and um, yeah, whenever that comes out, we'll we'll figure it out. But like the piss stuff, if we make piss stuff, we're kind of just like, well, let's just do it for Greystone, to be honest. Sure. Um, so all the other stuff, like electronic shit, we're just like making and seeing what happens, and then just playing guitar, and yeah, we're just we're just kind of we're chilling. We're just chilling. Yeah. Can Are you gonna do more uh, live from the, the Greystone Castle? Yeah. From Musician Mansion, kind of like the same, like just jamming all day, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Awesome. You got that slav in her. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, so things have been good. I, I'm glad to hear that. Um. Nick liked that one. <laughs> uh, Nick, have you been getting out of the house more? You you have more color in your in in your eyes, a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more color in the skin, a little more pep in your step. I I've been to a couple of your streams, and even the chat has been saying that uh, you just you just seem like you have this new spark, this He's new glowing. Brazilian glow. <laughs> yeah, man, it's the Brazilian glow. You, Hell yeah! That's it. You know, it's slightly more outside, and um, yeah, riding bikes, riding walking. bikes, and walking. You know, like super rock star shit. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's uh, cool. Honestly, man, the picture. I think Paula posted it. The picture of you when you guys went riding the bikes recently, and you just look absolutely pissed. And I was like, <laughs> "That's so Nick." <laughs> 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 that was fun no it's it's fun it's yeah it's getting air and yeah it's it's just a different different life it's wild and it's, it's chill and looking forward to the future and all that and it's been yeah it's been different man. that's awesome man i think people like us need that though because we're inside so much and we just, you know what I mean? So, like, getting air, touching the ground, getting sunlight. Martin and sea pills can only do so much. Yeah. It can only take He's so allergic. much time. I'm allergic to nature. Yeah, it's a, that's a good She's thing. I'm, 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 pills? 
C pills. Oh. I thought you said chi pills. Like, yeah, you don't need to do. You don't need to do tai chi. Just take chi pills, and you'll get the same thing. <laughs> It'll center you, bro. I swear. Um, Justin, you are currently uh, on your way to the first show. Or um, yeah, so we leave tomorrow. So today was like our band practice day. And then tomorrow we leave. Tomorrow's just all driving because we got to go from Pennsylvania to Texas. And then we're playing, Jesus I think we're playing like a headliner in Knoxville, Tennessee. And then we're playing this festival that we're headlining. And then we do the uh, Left to Suffers tour, which we're really how excited long, about. How long are you guys going to be out for? I think it's like two and a half weeks. But then we have like the headliners on the way there and on the way back. So it ends up being like three-ish. And we can find all the info for those shows on the Tala yeah, page. Yeah, Tala's Instagram or Left to Suffers. I think uh, Chamber, Mouth Breather, and Tracheotomy are all on it too. So they're probably posting about it. It's a solid lineup. We're so pumped for it. Mouth Breather is sick. Yeah. Less Nine. I, I don't think I've heard him before, but. Oh, they're, they're drummers insane. Yeah, I mean, probably the, yeah. the coolest house show of my life at uh, their bass player's house in Arizona. It was so weird. His family owned like a, a, a separate property for him to have like house shows at. What? Yeah, because the housing in that part of Arizona was so fucking cheap. Oh, and they wow. literally just bought a house for their son to just like use. That's yeah, so, so, okay. so him and his friends stay there. There was a pool in the back. He had a, he had one bedroom and it just had a big TV with Smash Bros on it. <laughs> and then we played a house show in his house and I accidentally put a hole in the wall and they were like, yeah. <laughs> they were like yes, that's so cool. I, th- I threw my the mic up on the like the chandelier and they were like rip it down and I was like I'm not doing that they were like encouraging me to smash the house yeah it was the weirdest this place down that's you crazy dismantle the establishment yeah. <laughs> so Justin you are going on tour uh, you're leaving and you're going to be with Left to Suffer and Mouth Breather and all those bands you're going to be doing that for a while my question are we going to be able to see you do front flips on stage. Yeah, I I'd say, twenty five percent of the time I land them. Most of the time, you see me attempt a front flip, and then I like land on my heels and fall back and flail around on the ground. That's what was so cool about the front flip in the show is the chances of me landing that were so slim. I never land those. You nailed it. I'll, I'll, I'm going to order you just like a mini trampoline. They're like twenty bucks. And just. <laughs> That on stage. Yeah, no, I'm triple. dead serious. I've been in this band for five years, and I started front flipping like our third show. I, I, was, I just was like a spur of the moment thing, and I think in the five years that I've been in Tala, I've maybe landed like four or five front flips. <laughs> I, wow! Like, one year. <laughs> Too much adrenaline. Well, the one time that it really mattered, yes. you fucking nailed it, yeah. and you made history. That was crazy to see. It's always yeah, it's really scary, scary too, because I, I usually am running on the stage. I jump. I'm not expecting to land it, and then I do, and I like run into Alex's pedal board because I can't stop. <laughs> Too much momentum. <laughs> That's my pedals. Get out of here. That's funny. Um, I have a question for the vocalists, Austin and Justin. Um, so, being dual vocals, uh, who wrote most of the lyrics for your song, and did you find it easy? or difficult to collaborate vocally and lyrically and go back and forth. And like, how did you decide, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this and et cetera. Uh, I guess I'll take the lead on this one. Yeah, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did uh, all the lyrics for it. And then um, we kind of like, as we were going, Justin just like had really cool ideas and was like, Oh, this be sick. If I lay a lot of them, he just did naturally. Like we'd just be running through the songs and he'd just come up and throw one in and we're like, Oh, absolutely. Like, <laughs> got to keep that yeah yeah he only had like like three or four layer moments but and then pig squeals we've got to keep those that's so <laughs> fucking tight <laughs> and he just says re 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 is just so right right just added, that was great stuff. that's what we were we're just like yeah like who cares we're just gonna do a re re moment and <laughs> fuck you and then yeah the duel i don't even it was just like we came up with the duel pro man thing just like it was like the first idea i feel like once we got to that part we're like what if you just also did the vocals and put just down right. doing double mosh calls yeah because it'd be so cool like who's i've never seen that happen really outside of like hardcore shows and it was epic and it was tight and got gave a moment to show off justin more because i took you know the lead on most of the vocals there 
so it was cool that he got to come out and like flex his shit too. And then <laughs> we got to go back and forth on the Grizzlies and the highs. And it was so, it was it so was sick. sick. When, when he switches over to the Grizzlies and then I do the highs, it's like, we just sound, yeah, like he's like two dinosaurs fighting. We're just like beating each other back and forth in dino mode. It's so sick. <laughs> so Justin, before we go to you, during your performance, there there was that moment where you did the pit call, uh-huh. like you were saying, and you both were just like, all right, everybody, time to... Did you guys rehearse that while writing the song and practicing the song? Or when you... Did you guys just like, okay, we're going to pit call. Let's yeah, just go I, for it. And then decided to... And did you have something <laughs> that you actually were going to say at that part? Or does the whole thing improv? The whole thing. Uh, I, I think just as well. I mean, we had like the idea, so we knew we were going to do that. So we, I feel like we tried out some stuff, but like it was never the same. Every time we tried it, it was always different. And then, yeah, when we did it live for the first time, it was different. But I think the only thing I kept was the, uh, the, the yo, what the fuck is yeah, up? Yo, what the fuck is up? <laughs> <laughs> It was just funny as fuck. It, I think <laughs> the middle we of practiced it like, like three times. Oh. It was never the <laughs> same twice. Like we just would say nice. things. Yeah. yeah, I had a whole different thing even, and I just went to improv. The actual version that we we did. Yeah, the live performance you think was the best? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's tight. <laughs> I think the only thing we didn't improv was like after the mosh call part, where it was like Austin's just gonna go, and I was like, I'll do like the Franz thing and just be like, and then we're like, all right, and then we'll switch it. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Are you saying words at that part? No, we, no, we abandoned words. <laughs> I the, am not saying any oh, words. Really? Yeah, after we do the, the like, what's on the motherfucking judgment day? That's <laughs> motherfucker. That's the, the last word. <laughs> Until I say fuck you very much, that's the, old, the last word. So, so hard I want to put DistroKid lyrics up for that song, dude. <laughs> 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 we're, we're like motherfucking die tonight. Yeah, we had to listen to the even before that happens. Like motherfucking die tonight. And you guys are overlapping, just swearing at each other, mm-hmm. and then it's the ending, which we just put anger commences because that's what you put. And I was like, that. <laughs> damn, yeah. that's so fun. So you're literally just going. Die, 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 die. Yeah, I was literally just like, Dang. oh man, he did the same sick. thing. It sounds sick. I know, one part I just go. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah, mic yeah. is just clipping like crazy. That's probably my favorite <laughs> moment. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> That's it's so funny. funny. That we yeah, have like it was so natural. To make the song. Yeah. We have five hours to make the song, and we just did like 30 minutes and like, okay, <laughs> we're fine. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Let's hang out in the. The Stairs. stars. Yeah, yeah the, our synergy was crazy. Honestly, I kept saying, "I was like the other bands are like, I wonder if they're even close to this because we're just like immediately like that works, that works. Like, yeah. No, no rewrites. Just yep, I love that riff. Actually, let's keep going. Well, you guys had this like cool, chaotic, fun energy, and it just worked because like sometimes chaos doesn't work. I feel like in in like instance of like Grasshopper, which I I still think they did great, but there were times where I feel like the the chaos didn't quite mesh with everyone at some point in time but i feel like with you guys whether it was writing a song doing the music video busking or whatever like somehow you guys like you could have won every day like you really could have and somehow you guys just managed to pull this like fun chaotic energy together to just be this cool fucking group <laughs> that, no, that no one would have guessed would have been the case right dude yeah Okay, what what are your guys' thoughts on the fucking the day the busking day oh and, the, my God. and the, the edit? I thought it was like, oh, this is beautiful. I we looked so like we were in on the joke and we were meme lords and it was great. And, and but in real life, to know how horrible that day you was, hated it. I feel like we all secretly did. And then, <laughs> yeah. Final edit. I was like, this is great. We this is perfectly in character for us. You guys fucking made us look great. No, that, that was a crazy. stressful day. I will say you don't get that, that in the uh, in the the show, but like there were no left-handed guitars, and Paula's left-handed. So at first right. we were like, all right, like before we even left the mansion, we're like, let's try to string it again upside down, and the pins mm-hmm. like wouldn't stay in. So Nick was like, spend like the first half hour of our busking, Ow. like trying to restring that guitar. 
well, I'm trying to play like 90s covers because that's all I know how to play. <laughs> Which is funny because then you're talking shit about 90s covers. How <laughs> like, fuck you, Anthony Vincent, with your 90s covers. But that's you're out all there. I could play for like an hour. I'm just like, all right, I know like all these big songs from the 90s and that's it. It was fun. It, okay, it was really <laughs> fun for me when I was editing your guys' portion of the busking day because at first when you guys get out there and also, also like, uh, you know, obviously Paula, left-handed guitar player, you brought your own guitar and for the busking, we used acoustics, complete oversight. Like, I didn't even think about yes. having a left-handed guitar. Totally my fault. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but okay. watching watching you guys while I was editing it, it seemed like you kind of you went out there and it was kind of a little bit awkward and you were all like okay you know like you were you seemed really uncomfortable at first and justin you were like putting on your leopard shorts and you had the guitar and nick was ass on the curb nick was like just a normal thursday or whatever but i feel like it slowly progressed by the end of your guys's busking justin you were like we need more deathcore fans in the world i'm the hype deathcore needs love and nick you were like yeah this is my team we just made 300 dollars from venmo like guys guys get over here like and you guys had like people actually standing around like watching you fans clapping so it seemed like initially the first like half an hour hour was really uncomfortable for you guys but by the time you were done you were all like yeah 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 definitely Um, also i was like okay i think i can play upside down like let's do Mm -hmm. yeah that works great i think if we would have like stuck to our guns and done the acoustic death core the whole time i think we might have been able to at least be really close to grasshopper or maybe even one like 10, 10 minutes I agree. more i guess because we yeah, made we all of our money fun. doing the acoustic death core and then the only reason we gave up was because we heard about what sky limit did and we were like oh there's no way we're gonna make yeah. that much money we should I just saw, like her mm-hmm. with a lot of money like, yeah i was like we're just fighting for second place we should just stop yeah and claim our dignity they posted up right next to you guys, didn't they? Or was that was that Grasshopper and Skyler? That was Grasshopper. And Skyler. That was grass- yeah. Okay, the Grasshopper yeah. was in the train station first, and then Sky Limit was right out. That's when they got their little donations right out in front of them. Which yeah. Is funny. Yeah. No, we came up later because we were over on that curb by the skate park for a while. Yeah. That's when Paula asked homeless people who went. It was so. <laughs> So you guys, you guys, we'll get back to that in a second. I was you, asking homeless people money. So <laughs> you're like, you, I need to come back to Brazil. Help me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So you guys saw Lauren holding a wad of money. And because of that, you stopped early. No, we didn't see it. We just heard through the grapevine. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw through the grapevine. No, she, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We stopped early because of that. We heard, yeah, we heard like, Right. We heard over three hundred dollars, and we're like, dude. So even if we try hard as hell for the next forty-five minutes, we are not making another two hundred dollars. So it was be because rough. Of, because I had no, I was tweeting. losing my voice more and more, and we yeah. ran out of water too. So we're like, dude, w- like we should just stop. There's nothing we can do now. That's so interesting. So because of her cheating, you guys stopped where yeah. you could have made more well, money. That's like, why I was and, pissed. That's yeah, the only. Really, What's funny yeah. is uh, at one point we were like, let's just go sabotage them. Like, let's just go switch spots because we were like, let's just find them and sabotage it. I think that's how the acoustic deathcore idea started. We were like, yeah, we should just like go stand by Grasshopper and Sky Limit and just like scream and be ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we that's were by the street like for a long time. And we, and again, we were the problem was we were trying to sell out. You can't sell out. You got to stick to your roots. Yeah. Just to fucking death core in the subway right. station, right? <laughs> and we did that for so long that it was just so demoralizing and getting things set up that we were just like, and then seeing they got money too, we were just like, okay, like let's just like let's just like stick together. Let's do the thing we know how to do, which is we have two raw boys, and we're not like using that as our advantage. And I knew. The, like the craziest thing people would see downtown is two people screaming at each other like how they scream you know what i mean it's all like <laughs> over over an acoustic yeah over an acoustic. Like, i do that's like the craziest fact like if, if, even if we don't make money we'll get on tmz or some shit right like well, okay. that wasn't in the uh in the final cut either but when uh, you guys are playing and then austin and i just start screaming like pay us and we'll leave like 
Where the chaos will go. Like the chaos will go away. So, so I actually, uh, I'm going to post highlight clips on my oh channel my from gosh. like moments from the show. Um, but I'm also going to do uh, extra content. So I want to do like uh, acoustic deathcore, like Greystone acoustic deathcore or whatever. And I want to actually use clips that didn't make it into the final. So nice. it would be like <laughs> 10, 12 minutes of you guys d doing like, because I think you guys like covered a Chelsea Grin song. Yeah. You guys did half of it. Yeah, you guys did like a, a couple covers. And, and we did late to rest over like G major chords. Yeah, yeah late to yeah. rest. Like a banger. So I, I want people to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we were the only ones that played our song, our original song too. Yeah, yeah, which is funny because we were acoustic. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Other bands would actually sing. Right. Didn't, you, didn't do the yeah. song. <laughs> and you guys are just out there going, "Dory, Dory, Dory, Dory." The, the call out part. It's so funny. <laughs> in the train stage. So, so wait, Paula, you went and asked a homeless guy for money. How? What is this There's story? A of them. <laughs> I was asking, like, I was desperate. I was like, we need to win this. And I start asking for the skate guys, for homeless people, <laughs> for everybody that was passing. Also, Justin was uh, twerking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, I did a. I, I was did like, I need to come okay. to Brazil. Help me! And Nick was so worried because, like, he thought people would guess that I was kidnapped. Right. Uh, oh yeah, I thought we were gonna get arrested. <laughs> yeah, she was like walking. There were like people sitting in their cars, and she would like walk up to the car and be like, "Help me, please." <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh my god, no. You know, hula skirt, like, oh my Damn, god. Damn, the fact that no one actually helped is kind of <laughs> fucked up a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. He's like, go home. That's a big like, for you. <laughs> I'm out of here. I think it's some I did, fun, a, I did a live stream at that yeah. corner on Instagram for like the first like 30, 40 minutes. And I it, I deleted it out of shame, but it was it was <laughs> I wished I had that piece of content to see how awkward it was. There was oh so much people in there, and I was like, "What do we do?" <laughs> it was pretty awkward until we got to the deathcore part. Yeah, once we got past over there, it was great. We did but not know what to do. Like you just see, because I got a little bit of it in my vlog. You see, Nick is just stringing a, a guitar. I'm singing '90s covers by myself, but I can't sing because my voice is so fucked up. Austin's just like sitting there, like shaking an egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like we did not even a musical one i just brought an egg <laughs> we did austin you were uh you were trying to make that cardboard would say like one dollar for this patreon like one dollar for justin twerking i wrote so many good things but there's just too many words on there nobody was reading it yeah, yeah. we had like you 20 should have just been like please donate but you walk by and it's just like a patreon tier list of content that's like hey we'll do this <laughs> <laughs> what is Damien, I really enjoy that it, while you guys are doing that, it was like, you know, that you guys would do like, I think it was doing your original song and you had a bongo and you, the guitars would just be like, dun, 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 and you were just going. Yeah, I was just like, it's just like, <laughs> doing, what, but what do I do? Work. Acoustic deathcore. Yeah, just it like, works. Yep. I'm just hanging out. You could have been the best bongo player in the world. And it would not have changed what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so technically, Greystone, that was your guys' first live show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a crowd. You had a crowd and you actually performed your original song, mm -hmm. unlike Sky Limit and Grasshopper. True. More money well, than I mean, most we did have the, show. What's up? Made more money than most bands in their first show. <laughs> yeah, we, went, we went on tour. We got a good set from a couple of people. Yeah. Yeah. When we yeah. called it, like people, we had like a good, like, well, like there was like a half a dozen people, maybe more, all it's watching. And when we like <laughs> called it, we're like, all right, guys, we're done. People were like bummed out. Like they wanted yeah. more. Bro, you yeah. should, can you play this song? We're like, we're tired of being shamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one dude said you were going to be bigger than Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, the same guy. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Him. He's, I've seen him at karaoke before, actually. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Guy. yeah he just nice. to be there. Bro, the looks we were getting from the people coming out of the train station. Oh, oh yeah, we were timing it. I saw that. I saw that. There was one guy that just like walked up, stopped, and was like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, God, I didn't think that was in the cut. Security got called on us a couple times. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, like we're just screaming, and you'd see security like go up and like look at us and then be like, yeah, they're just blah, blah, blah. And then like they would just leave uh, after that. Dang. 
It was. Yeah. It would always pull Justin really close by one of his ass cheeks and whisper something to him, and then they'd leave, and I was like, "What was that?" <laughs> it, it, was, it was. It was a weird Thanks, day. Justin. We were trying to time it too, so like we're like kind of sitting around, and then we'd hear like the train show up, and all the people are coming up the escalator, and we're like, "Now, now, start the song!" Right, right. <laughs> yeah, they're coming. I feel a lot of that too. I would close my eyes because I was looking at the people and they all look so tired and upset and sad. And I was like, I can't, I can't be here mentally right now. I mean, there was a lot of people when they, would come, when they would come off. There was a lot of people that were like recording us probably to be like, wow, look at this crazy shit happening downtown right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, even for Seattle, that's that's a pretty interesting thing to see. It was bold. Yeah. yeah. It's very bold. People going out from the train, like downstairs. Oh, they could mm-hmm. they could hear them as soon as they got out of the train, but couldn't see anything. Oh, yeah, they they just, so loud. So loud. You probably so couldn't loud. hear the uh, the acoustic guitars either. You just hear screaming yeah, upstairs. They're doing a pigeon zoo in the train. Yeah. And you just see Justin run and do a front flip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh my. going on? I can't imagine getting off a train in Seattle and just hearing. And then imagine their shock when they exactly. bound the corner and they hear it. <laughs> they're like, oh, on. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Sunfire did the toad. Yeah, thing. they saw an alien screaming like toad, and they're like, what? <laughs> no, oh, and hold on. The nose Where's the camera? Like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those people. Oh. They stop, like, <laughs> what's going on with you? <laughs> Like, that's so fucking funny dude all right so graystone played their first live show would there ever be a possibility of bars. A, another graystone live show ever potentially in the history of life there has to be i just have I don't know. I mean, like, if we release more stuff and people are like, go make dummy caveman music for us live and the boys. Dude, want to fucking if go we and- make an EP, I see no reason why we couldn't hop on a tour. I know it's you. Yeah. Yeah, we should do a ho- like a house show tour. <laughs> That'd be the craziest thing. <laughs> That'd be so, so on, on bar. Yeah, we are right on our band. That would be exactly what you guys need to do. That's right. 100% on- house slam. show tour. <laughs> That would be so sick. So is there a plan for an EP or more music? Yeah. I mean, we were kind of just like, yo, if we just like shit out like instrumentals, you boys want a RAR when it's done like quickly. Absolutely. They were just like, yeah. So we'll just, you know, make it as we go and figure it out, I guess. But the first one, like we're just laughing how good the first one's going. So we're just like, (laughs) it was so chilling, man. (laughs) So yeah. super crew. I saw this in the comments because a lot of people were like, Sky Limit should have won the first show, but you look at the Spotify plays and the views, it looks like everyone likes Greystone. It yeah. was really funny because I did clip out the live <laughs> performances. <laughs> or uh Kevin clipped out the live performances from day one and I posted them separately on my channel as highlight clips. And then I went back like twenty four hours like a day later and Greystone, I think you guys had like thirty something thousand, and then the other two had like twelve thousand. And I was like, Oh and, well and, see. There and you go. that's the that's the middle slot is the hardest for uploads because it's either the first or the last that get yeah. the clicks. Yeah. So that's like that is just we have the fame. Yeah. <laughs> People want the stone. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, your episode, you see the stone. little boost thing, like when people see the retention of where they click and, and where they're watching the most. It's so funny <laughs> seeing the big curve when we're Yo, being what the fuck? idiots on stage of just yeah. like the fucking dinosaurs go. So I, I think well, people hate on deathcore just because people hate on deathcore. Sure. It's yeah. one of those well, genres like Nickelback where everyone like says they don't like it, but it. everyone knows every it. song. Mm-hmm. If you take it too seriously, too, I think it's, it makes it easier to hate on. So when it's silly, people are like, oh, this is awesome. Like, they're just yeah. having fun. Like, like who cares? 2007. Yeah, exactly. yeah, when it's campy and it's kind of fun and it's silly. Yeah, well, we're self aware of how silly this is, but it's also still hard as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was seeing a lot of comments also that were saying, oh, Sky Limit had the best song they should have won. And so. The reason that it was like the songwriting challenge, but then we did the live performance was because like 
you guys were all so vastly different in your sounds. It's like, how can you compare a deathcore song to a uh, kind of like radio rock metalcore song to a grunge mm-hmm. kind of classic <laughs> jazzy rock song? So I was like, well, that's not going to be fair if I'm like, oh, well, you're, this song is the best one because they're not even close to being the same. So that's why I was like, let's do a live performance. Mm-hmm. And then the live performance is going to be what we judge yeah, and like how you are, how you are on stage, how you perform the song. Yeah. And even if you do think that maybe sky limit has the more like, like better song or radio friendly song or whatever, um, you guys, you guys tore that stage up. And that was the difference was like, was sky limit kind of just like, you know, uh, stood there mostly. And you guys were like going crazy. And I remember just like smiling the whole time. Like, like I love deathcore obviously, but I also love rock and radio rock and metalcore and all that stuff. So when you guys got on stage, I was just like, they're having so much fun. The energy is so hype. It's so sick. Like clearly you guys just, just took out the competition for that. So that's why mm-hmm. we did the live performance instead of like, Oh, who did the best song? Cause right. I don't think that would have been. Also parody. our chorus wasn't just follow boy. Thanks for the memories. Skylimer. <laughs> <laughs> More like a rolling in the deep. Ooh, what the... I, I heard that. I, I heard people saying it reminded them of rolling in the deep, mm-hmm. but no, you know, when, it, when they were, uh, they were practicing. We were like sitting outside just chilling for a minute. And I just heard Lauren go like, ah. and then one of us was like, thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, it was really funny because I don't know if you guys saw it. I put a little edit. Someone made like a minute edit that said like musician mansion in a nutshell. Yeah. And it was during when Grasshopper was doing their song and they're doing that like second verse where it's like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And, da, 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 da. and then it goes to like yeah and it goes to asking alexandria doing that like da, 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 da. oh my and i was like oh, i didn't even think i, about I didn't that. catch that at all until i watched that and then i was like oh yeah. no yeah. It was they were like the really song. Song. Yeah. Yeah. and they accidentally did ask alexandria yeah we, right. we wrote a new song so. <laughs> yeah Hundred percent. We didn't even have a chorus. Favorite is when uh, Dylan is in the confessional saying that anybody can do deathcore, and then it, it hard cuts to him moshing. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, that was so good. Did it ever just like caught in four K? Like talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Which band moved you to physically get on your feet? <laughs> when you guys watched the edit back of all the episodes, did you guys feel like how you were in person was properly represented in the edit in the show like when you guys would play a character or when you would do something it was like yeah that's how i thought it would come across or did it kind of like was it different than what you expected a little bit i i guess i'll go first i'm yeah, sorry i'm, talking I'm just did. like a puppy so like the, <laughs> the energy like i've always been that way the only part that I felt like that might have got misinterpreted was the part where I was like, fuck you, Anthony Vincent. <laughs> because like I was, was a character. I I love Anthony. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, when I watched it back, I was like, that kind of seems like I'm actually like have beef with Anthony. <laughs> it was so funny to see that he didn't know about it either. He didn't know yeah. the whole time. And he added, and he's like, oh. <laughs> having beef with someone when they don't know you have That's beef hilarious. with them is really fun what about you damien <laughs> did you feel like you were came across in the way that like you know you were representing yourself yeah definitely i mean i was definitely trying to be uh a little goofy during the like confessional and wearing those like ridiculous glasses i loved your commitment to sitting sideways every time there was a new oh, seat yeah, every time <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first one I went in and I was like, Kevin, uh, has anyone, has everyone just been like sitting normal in the chair? And he was like, yeah. And I just like, <laughs> like flop over, <laughs> throw my legs up. I was like, yep. Long ass leg boy. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. What about, what about you guys, Nick and Paula watching it back? What do you think? Yeah. I mean, that's sleep deprived, drinking a lot and, uh, and break down Nick, but it's, Definitely weird watching it back now um, when we watched it. But yeah, you can talk now. <laughs> uh, for me, like uh, like being in the reality show was a little bit hard because mm-hmm. like I come like go out from Brazil and arrive in a house with like 20 people who speaking other language with me in the same time. I was like freaking out. So like the confession, confessionary 
was very hard for me because I get very anxious and nervous. But like, I start to feel more confident around like day three mm -hmm. and mo much more like me. So right. like, I feel like the roast was more like me. Yeah. <laughs> when I, I am like, I was like that with the guys like a whole time. Mm. But like in front of the camera, I, I don't know, something like I get very nervous. Well, I, I couldn't tell at all if you were nervous, like any time that I was looking watching the confessional camera, I mean, there, you're literally just like, I'm ready for everything. I'm ready. Let's go. Like, you're just always so excited, you know, and, and it didn't come across as, uh, as nervous at all. So yeah, I think the, you the guys, like the, the camera guys, the camera crews was very amazing. They very like make me. Yeah. Feel they're good people. Yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. Thank you, Paula. It was, it was really interesting. Was that? that was Kevin. That was the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> Kevin, the ghost. Uh, it was really interesting watching you guys be, because like, depending on the challenges that you all were doing, um, it seemed that like a different leader would kind of emerge. Like when you're writing the songs, like, Nick, I feel like you really kind of rose to the occasion for the songwriting, uh, like the editing of the music video, Austin, obviously you busted out that edit, even though it was two minutes before it was due, like you, you, you nailed it. Um, it and, right on brand for me. And then like, while you were filming Damien, you were the one that was being like, come on guys, let's, let's keep it together. Let's go. Like you were trying to stay on schedule and kind of like, you know, hurting the crowd. Um, Justin, you really shined during the busking. Like you were out there with the acoustic guitar before, it, you know, while everyone else was setting up and you were just like singing with the acoustic and you were like, okay, we're out here. Let's do it. Uh, Paula, your roast was like the hardest angel and I have laughed the entire week. <laughs> That was absolutely hilarious. Um, so I guess like the question is, did that all just happen supernaturally? Did the personalities of everyone work so well together that you didn't even have to think about a leader? Um, just kind of whoever needed to step up, just stepped up and you guys got it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, people, well, it was yeah. just like, okay, here's the, here's the objective. And then somebody would just be like, oh, I'm good at that. Yeah. We would do that. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah. Well, it was like when we were do the guitar smash, Nick, you were saying that like, just Justin said that like, you know, you, I'm going to do a front flip. And I was like, okay, like do it. Like anyone else, I would be like, you're going to die. Yeah. But you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, you're, oh, it's just, you're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. like he's not joking because he said like it's like, was, like what if I do a front flip, guys? I'm like, oh, you're oh, he's serious. Okay, <laughs> he's gonna try to do this. Oh, you seen those legs? I didn't doubt it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, over well, really? I'm not beating that with my whatever 360 Tony Hawk fake shit I would try to do. So, Tony right, you know, go for it, bro. That was my my vibe with it. Yeah. That was so funny too when you landed and smashed it. Everyone was just like. <laughs> what the fuck? I know you went first, too. Oh yeah, I was not expecting <laughs> I that. I thought I was gonna go last and like be like, all right. What the fuck happened? Yeah. Was yeah, that was good. Um so Kevin typed a question. He says, What happened during the video shoot? And I don't think this actually made it onto the final cut, but what <laughs> happened during the video shoot where everyone got sick before turning in the video? Were you guys trying to buy time? Because I remember being downstairs um and we were waiting for you guys to show up in the, the theater room to to do the to watch the videos. And I think Justin, you ran down and you were like, Paul is sick, Paul is throwing up, she's throwing up in the bathroom. I don't know what's going on. Okay. What? I what misinterpreted happened? what happened. So, like, did some? Did do you guys come up with like a plan? To, like, no, no, a, there was a no. What? I, I, we needed to like buy more time. It was a huge yeah. miscommunication because we finished and uh -oh. then we all did like a celebratory shot, and then Paula ran into the bathroom. And I was okay. like looking around. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And like, good shot. For some reason, I thought she was like throwing up or something. So like, I ran down and I was like, "Yeah, we're on our way." But Paula's in the bathroom throwing up because I didn't know oh what was going on. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like shot, and then she just took off, and I was like, "Oh, I guess she doesn't like alcohol or something." <laughs> I have a great video I took of all of us taking like that shot, and. <laughs> 
Nick just goes right into the camera and he's like, oh, what the fuck is this? And then I hear you in the background and you're like, wow, that's really strong. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made them. And it was just like all alcohol with like a little bit. Yeah, the juice was a lie. It was just for color. Yeah. That's um, funny. Like, maybe like sometimes when I want to pee, I, I forgot that I want to pee and I keep like holding it. Right. And and then you drink liquid. You're like, oh my god! Yeah, like, oh my god! I need to be right now, and I just run. Like that's so. That's that's, that was my bad. I like. I thought she was puking from because she ran so fast, and I was like, oh no! And then someone was like, we got to go downstairs now. So I went down. I was like, I'll tell them that she's puking because I, that's what I literally thought was going on. That's so funny. Damien and I were like the the ghost bartender in The Shining. We'd just be up there in the dark. And somebody would come up to use that extra bathroom. They'd be like, "What are you guys doing?" They're like, "You want a drink?" <laughs> yeah. They come into the darkness sure. and talk to us for like five minutes and take a couple shots, and then they they disappear. Oh yes, Sophie was talking. About <laughs> Sophie that. had one of those moments. We did that with a couple of people. Just be completely dark up there, and we're just like, "So, still on at the bar." I think there's two drunk ghosts upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny. It's really funny because you doing that, Justin, you actually bought Grasshopper more time because they were, they were having the computer issues. And so you bought them an extra like 15 minutes, which they, they still ended up not winning. But yeah, it was it was funny. It was funny. Was funny miscommunication that didn't make it onto camera. But we were like, uh, all is throwing up. What's happening? What's I was, going I was on? Wondering, why, run, wondering why Rudy slipped Justin the $20 bill. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> oh, man. Um <laughs> Nick, I have a question for you. The fans want to know, hmm. when can we expect to see uh, How to Greystone in 30 seconds? <laughs> I, I need the... It's it's not even guitar related. It's just dino boys, man, just roaring at each other. You know, go watch fucking Jurassic Park. That's out of 30 seconds, Greystone, man. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, how to, it's hard to do how, how to do Greystone in 30 seconds because that's what the process was to write it. It was just... <laughs> what is there to parody? This is the parody. <laughs> Oh, man. This is yeah, this is us making fun of Paleface. This is <laughs> we already did the thirty seconds. That's so funny. Um, yeah. I have a question for uh, Justin Austin. You both are obviously uh, incredible vocalists with your own styles. Um, throughout the week, have have either of you learned anything from each other uh, in regard to like vocal techniques? how to do new sounds, new styles, et cetera, things like that from just being around each other. Like, did you guys kind of bounce off each other being in the same group, dual vocalist? How was, how was that? Yeah. I mean, for me, I've always like loved Austin's vocals and just like, I think I said this in my vlog, like I learned how to guttural from Jared's tutorial on how to do gutturals. And I learned how to tunnel from Austin's tutorial on how to tunnel. <laughs> so just like hearing him make sounds, I like downloaded it all into my brain. So at the mansion, I'm like hearing him do more stuff. And I'm like, Ooh, I should try that when I get home. And like, I feel <laughs> I like, we just had band practice like an hour ago. And I was like, I was like, man, I feel like my highs are better after having like heard how loud Austin is like in front of me now, I'm like, okay, so like that's the volume I'm going for now. And I just noticed like I got this intensity and I was like, all right, cool. My fucking man. Yeah, and the I, same I with the lows. Like watching Austin in the Greystone performance when he does that like wicked low like part before like the hey, what the fuck is up? I was like, oh, how yeah. did he go that low? Yeah, people because, have been calling that one the walrus. Yeah, because yeah, you like don't Riz have a deep voice. voice. And yeah, I always talk sorry. about how, like, you listen to, like, Ben Jer and Alex Terrible and, like, all those guys that are known for their lows. And I'm like, well, yeah, they have deep voices. But I'm like, Austin doesn't have a deep voice. Like, your voice is almost as high as mine. So I'm like, but he can <laughs> still get that low. And so I'm like, all mm -hmm. right, I need to, like, raise my standards I'm for lows and figure that <laughs> out. <laughs> That's the best thing. You, yeah, having somebody to bounce off of is so so cool and so inspiring. You're like, oh yeah, well, I gotta do. I gotta figure out how to do that thing he was doing. Yeah. I, just, I got like a free like 20 minute vocal coaching from eavesdropping on Justin talking with Anthony <laughs> about. I was about to bring that up. I was just right next to him and I was like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, you know, <laughs> hey, Justin for vocal lessons because. I've been doing this for a long time and he was like saying some shit that was like, oh, God damn it. That makes so much more sense. 
I feel like I got like better from singing from listening to you do that. I was like, oh, that's oh, what that thanks, was. man. No, Thank you. Austin, you have it. He has it. Like a lot of stuff just comes super intuitive to him. Like I'm listening to him, and I'm like, dude, that took me years to figure out. And he can just kind of like, mm-hmm. it's very, that's my very impression. cool. I, I hear a sound, a person, a sound, anything, and I instantly like tried to make the sound. <laughs> oh, I remember probably eight years ago, back when we were living in the same house. Uh, he would like hear a, a vocal or something, and then he'd just be walking around the house, being like, ah, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> and then like a week later he'd be like i got it <laughs> and then he would it. just do it and i was just like how do you i don't even yeah, no tutorials just like i'll figure it i'll find it yeah i'll find the spot in my, my throat just <laughs> trial and error and and figure do you do you do vocal lessons do you give vocal lessons justin yeah that's basically like my full-time job um, okay like last year and the year before i was literally doing it like six hours a day seven days a week and then i just started getting really tired because i was like dude this is really hard so i made my mm-hmm. patreon course and now i only teach like three days a week so i can rest my voice more and like do more like music related stuff but yeah like i i became a coach because when i joined tala um it was like our third show. I lost my voice and I was like, this has never happened before. And like, it freaked me out. So I was like, what am I doing wrong? And then that's when I got into like, like the science side of it and started taking like mm-hmm. classical singing lessons and like learning about the anatomy. And then all of a sudden I'm watching tutorials and I'm like, a lot of people have no idea what they're talking about. And I was one mm-hmm. of those people. And I was just like, mm-hmm. wow, this is actually like, there's so many layers to it that you would never think. It's so exciting. There's so many new things. Yeah, like, like you think you have it figured out, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Well, wait, I'm actually doing two things at once, and I can separate that into two totally different techniques now." And it's crazy. What as soon as you unlock one, you're like, "What if I do all ten of my other styles with that new thing?" And you're like, well, "There's yes. new styles. It's so exciting." <laughs> um, going back to uh, when you were doing the roast, Justin, you talked about. Oh, no. how- <laughs> no, no, no. You, you you talked about how it's hilarious, by the way. I loved your roast. Um during that vocal contest years ago, you did that that noise, the, the eh, whatever. That do you do you still do that? Can you still do that? Yeah, it's, it's hard. Weird. Is that something you try to like use in your songs to this day? Or is that yeah. kind of like something you did and was like, well, that lives there now? So like I learned how to do it a couple months before your contest. So the contest was the first time I tried to do it in the context Mm -hmm. and I had been practicing it. I like, I don't know if you know the full story behind that, but like, um, our old DJ told me about your contest, like the day before it was over. So I wrote the whole thing, practiced it in my car and then uploaded it. So it literally was one take. I was like, I don't think I can do too many more of these. My voice is going to get tired. So yeah. I was like, let's see if it works. And it did. And I felt so cool. But that that squeaky sound, I do that with Tala now, but it's so hard because it really is hit or miss. It's basically mm-hmm. like a fry scream that's so tight that you get and it just squeaks. Uh, yeah. So it was like, right. I'm, I'm going like, ah, uh, and just go right yeah. into it. But it's it's hard. I mean, it's, it sounds so cool. I don't do it like in the foreground anymore because (laughs) when i did the ghost feet thing people kept wanting me to perform it like on my live streams like do ghost feet do ghost feet and i would always be super drunk and it would get to that part and i wouldn't be able to do (laughs) it and i was like wow i'm letting people down like this is like when chester would couldn't hold like the full 17 seconds in that given upstream and then sometimes you would get it and the crowd would go nuts and i'm like man this is probably something i don't want to make like the shining star of the song. Cause if I can't right. do it, it's going to let everyone down. Mm-hmm. So it kind of is like almost that. like a one time only in that song thing, because I was like, uh, I don't know if I want to be known <laughs> as the squeaky guy. <laughs> you were a little bit like, Icar. you, you flew too close That's to funny. the sun a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, how many, how many cuts there are of, of music like that, where there's a different version, but they were like, I got to change. This is way too hard to perform. I've done that a couple of times. Oh yeah, we do it all the time. It's actually way harder to do live than I thought it would be. And I had to rewrite exactly. some shit. Exactly. On well, like, our new album, <laughs> there's a song, um, Shaken Not Stirred. I don't even sing that chorus the same way because it was so high. <laughs> I, mean, I like, we did a tour with Attila and we did it. You know, I sang it every night and then towards the end of it, <laughs> towards the end of the tour, I was like, man, this is really hard for my voice. So uh, me and the guitarist were like, let's like lower it. And then, I do the harmony that he did, and then he does 
the high part and we just kind of flip flopped okay. it so it works better and then in that same song there's like a 19 second guttural that i do in the studio and then live i was like this is really hard to do live i think i'm just gonna like improvise some lyrics and that's just the way i do it now mm-hmm. right yeah it's a different world when you're live yeah 100 it definitely 100%. is one of those things where like I kind of wish Tala lived closer so we could jam out the songs for a little bit before committing yeah. to put it in the studio. And then I would know, okay, I don't want to do this because I can't do it. Whereas in right. the studio, it's like, all right, yeah, I made this sound. I could do this every night. And then it's like, no, you can't. <laughs> well, I think that was one thing that I, I really personally enjoyed about the whole Musician Mansion thing was that, that you were all in the same place. You were all there when you were writing. And that was one thing I was going to ask quickly, too before we wrap up is if you guys do more music, do you think the dynamic and the songs and everything is going to be different now that you guys aren't going to be in the same place doing it together? You guys don't have the pressure of, Oh, we only have five hours. You don't have any challenges. There's Um, no pressure. You guys are doing it separately. It's the, the, the dynamic might be a little bit different. Have you guys thought maybe like, you know, how to kind of deal with that. Do you think that might be an issue? Because I know Nick, like when you deal with it, when you released Bleed the Fifth, I think you did the recording, right? For like, you recorded the drums and the guitars and stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. But then like left some of the live vocals from the performance. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it's just too cool, yeah. Yeah, it was it was super cool. Yeah, if if you yeah. didn't leave it, people would be like, "What the fuck? This is the best part of the song." Like, well, even like the I was like the boys, like like I, as soon as we had it, I was like, "You guys shouldn't record this again." Like I I was like, "You shouldn't do." It. And then the and then we were like, I know they probably listened to it a few times. We're like, "Okay, I need to change like some things." And we were like, "Okay," and both the boys like recorded the whole. They actually recorded the whole thing, mm-hmm. and we had both uh, that and then the live take in the session. And me and Paul were both just going back and forth, and we're like. Like the recorded obviously How sounds better. Work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we were just like, there's no way the psychotic energy <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that these two did when they were doing that live performance, like they could sit there and do it exactly the same at home. Won't be the same. It's not going to happen. So like we had to keep these like that live take. Basically, the ending is just a live take. Yeah. All right. That's so maybe that's something that I would like to see if we do if we can do a season two musician mansion, maybe get you guys all in a room again and maybe see if we can make that happen and get the vibe like it used to be and, and see like what we used to come up with. Back in the day. Back in the back, back in the day, day. back in our prime. Back in your prime. A um, well, Grace Stone, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, I really do appreciate your time, and I know everybody watching does. Before we go, is there anything that you all individually or as a group would like to say to the audience? Grace Stone Gang! Slam dogs, baby. Slam <laughs> dogs! No, I mean, I guess. Go listen to the fucking song. It's, yeah. stream it. it's sick. Yeah. It's fun. Stream it's it. called Musician Mansion on Spotify and it's called Bleed the Fifth on YouTube. You guys have almost 200,000 plays, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, do we really? Oh, yeah. is, it really up? is it up that high already? I uh, think so. Let me check real quick. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's it? It's just under uh, Greystone, right? Yeah, yeah. Or if there Mansion. was any doubters to us winning, check the friggin' numbers. Check the numbers. <laughs> yeah, 100, 170,000. And, and we, we uploaded in, uh, not first. Yeah. yeah, we uploaded late. Damn, hundred and seventy thousand. That's really that's pretty fucking good. That's really cool. I love that. I love that for you guys. I, I feel like if we wanted to try doing another song, we, we would the probably song? have to next like song would be, there's a get chicken. in a call. You know what I mean? <laughs> chicken. Yeah, get in a voice call because I was thinking about that for the vocals. Get in a voice call, everyone has their instruments, and I feel like we'd also have to like give ourselves a time limit. Because I think that's part of what made Bleed the Fifth so cool was we didn't have time to overthink things and overcomplicate it. Right. It was just like, we have to memorize this. We have to be able to play it. Nick just did his copy pasta and just like super mm-hmm. easy riffs. Like I know for me, part of it was that I'm not a bass player. So it was like, all right, we got to make sure that I play stuff that I can do vocals while playing. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. We were halfway through writing a second song at the mansion. That, it was actually oh, kind of yeah. cool. I forgot about that one. Yeah, we had like two, like almost. Two I didn't know about song. this. Yeah, we had like two minutes of a song, and I, I wrote lyrics to it, and we would play it sometime. It was really cool. It had a, like, a different feel to it. It was like very atmospheric. I still have the recordings on my phone if we ever wanted to fucking use those. Okay. Yeah, it had hear. that dun 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 dun. And that really cool, eerie, like, uh, mm. o, like OG the artist murder, like ambient riff type oh, we might have to bust that out season two yeah 
Oh want. shit. Yeah. Yeah, the lyrics will be the song will be called Chicken But Hole. Chicken But Hole. <laughs> but hole. Nice. nice. And then the very end it goes. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes are what made that. The eyes. <laughs> yeah, the I, I, I feel like I want to just clip that highlight. Just make like a three and a half minute highlight of Paula's roast and post it separately. You and just, you, like, you, yeah, just like. That'd be a good green screen meme of just like. Explode. I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. Yeah, it was so good. <laughs> I had no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> I know when we were all trying to write jokes and everything for the roast, Paul was like, "I don't know what I'm going to do," and then she just randomly came up with that uh, that like massage gun and like had it to her forehead, and we were like, "Yeah, that's do that." Yeah, that is she's just like hilarious. massaging her head and was like, "I'm not sure what jokes I want to do." It's <laughs> like do that. <laughs> And then you're like, all right, I'm going to start now. <laughs> You've been up there for two minutes. Oh, that was I'm going to start part. now. <laughs> the Figaro thing was so funny because that was the, the, she didn't do that part in the yeah, we rehearsal. Know about yeah. that. She threw all of us yeah, really both dying. I actually have an idea after I watched Bradley. Mm. Like, because oh, yeah, physical- Bradley oh, yeah. was so funny, like falling down. And I kind of like feel the vibe that he would sing something like opera. Mm-hmm. Like I really believe he was going to do that, and he if he did like Figaro, I would like like laugh so hard. And, it, yeah. and he didn't do that, and I say like that's my opportunity to embarrass myself here. <laughs> Improving on the spot, you love to see it. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. With the because Sophie went before her, and the thing was already short, and she like yeah. leaned into that's that too. It was so yeah. She's yes, a, she's, she a, she's a comedic sure. genius. Yeah. <laughs> so I also loved. I think it was uh, Paula when Lauren was up doing her roast, and she was talking about, oh, you know, like we had to make content because no one else here is, could do that, and you know, we have to make the show interesting. And then the camera pans to your face, and you look pissed. <laughs> you look so mad. You're just like. <laughs> Just like killing her with your daring, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude, we have to include this shot." Because in fact, it was not about Lauren. I was like, "My time, like, is going to be like very soon." So, like, I need to get in the mood. Yeah. To be like, oh, that's so funny. No, Yeah. So, like, are you just like starting to mess up with the camera and say like? (laughs) <laughs> the camera so like probably there's a lot of clip of me like just staring yeah <laughs> getting into character it's so, funny. Yeah. It's, so it's so funny well guys thank you so much for joining us today graystone the official winners of season one musician mansion you can check out their song bleed the fifth on spotify and all other streaming services we hope to hear more music from them very soon and maybe just maybe get them back on season two if we can make season two happen sure. hopefully we can thank you guys so much for joining us hang with us for a little bit after we get done here so we can upload the footage we appreciate you guys all watching and we appreciate graystone for being here thank you so much you've been condemned to eat gravy for all eternity how do you plead guilty my lord commence the gravy pour (laughs) yes look at him Consumed in his own glutton. This gravy is delicious. Ready to throw it all away for a pint of gravy. This gravy is delicious. This, you're not supposed to like the gravy. It's good. I want more, my Um, lord. Get a towel. We're going to gravy board him. Please, sir. Can I have some more? You can have... (laughs) Let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right thank you guys so much for watching that podcast with gray stone be sure to check out their hit single bleed the fifth on all streaming services everywhere and uh follow them support them justin bonnet nick Eternal, paula caragosa damian ward austin dickey they're all amazing amazing talented musicians That's and they true. all have their own platforms go check them out go follow them go show them some love because <laughs> i love them and that means you oh. should too um, so we're going to go uh, hop right into the after show where we interact with our patrons over on Patreon and uh, read your questions and comments and talk to you over there. If you want to be a part of that, you can go to patreon.com link in the description below and you can be a part of the after show. Without further ado, cue the after show. It's time for.
All right, everybody. Welcome to the Dickie Dines After Show. We have a few questions from our patrons over on patreon.com. Um, this question comes from Colin Farrig, and he says, how much for Dickie to cover dissolution in a discordant system by Acrania? How much to to cover that Acrania song? I haven't listened to Acrania in a minute. I'd do it for a hundred bucks. hundred bucks? Yeah. Okay. Do you not like because I don't really want to do that. But <laughs> if you give me a hundred dollars, I'd do it. Do you not like uh, that that song? I know it's not that I don't like it. It's just like it's not gonna. I mean, it's like an older song. It's probably not gonna do super well. And like, the crania is fine, but I didn't. Yeah. I never. I never loved the crania. Yeah, but I would. I would do it for for a couple bucks. Couple bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Colin would love to hear you do that. Um, this question comes from Seth Davis. It's a spicy one. He says, Ooh. after show question, best and worst parts about working with each other. Have there been any off-camera disagreements that threatened the future of the channel? Oh, interesting. Uh, best and worst. I mean, best for sure. Making videos with your best boy is like, I mean, come on. It's <laughs> I, fun. That needs no yeah. like definition of why that's cool. It's just sick to be able to like... Yeah, we have a work day scheduled, but it's like I mean, we're hanging out also. Right. So it's, it's yeah. really it doesn't feel like work. Very cool dynamic. I feel very lucky to be able to to share this with my best boy. I don't think we've ever had any like disagreements like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I think I don't know. Yeah, it's it's usually pretty good. Maybe some content disputes of like I know you don't like spicy stuff, so it's like sometimes we spicy we can't food. do spicy things ever. So it's like, I mean that's not like a, uh, a problem though. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of. I can't remember anything where I was like, you know what? It was too far. That was too. Yeah, I don't think that's ever happened. I'm trying to. Yeah, I just don't think. Yeah, I guess I. I mean, it's not anyone's fault or anything. I just. I wish we had a. I wish our show was further along, so we had a bigger budget to do more. Oh, for things sure. outside. Like that's. I guess for a little. Sure. But that's not a negative about us. It's just. I wish we had that uh, potential to do like a little more wacky stuff with a little bit higher budget. Yeah, and we're working towards it. We're getting there. Yeah, and obviously, like if there were problems, I don't think we would be doing this as long as we have. Right, and if there ever have been, we usually just talk about it. Yeah, and it wouldn't be anything like. That you would be able to tell, I think, if there was like mm -hmm. something weird with the dynamic, right? A hundred percent. Um, but yeah, like as far as channel ending disagreements, no, no, I don't think so. Not yet, at least. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Yeah, do you remember your, do your dog that went missing? <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, I'm really sorry that happened. My to you. dog. <laughs> I didn't do anything to your dog. Um. So this one comes from Blade. Okay. Uh, with a Y, B L A Y. -E. Oh, boo. <laughs> uh, he says, first off, I want to say thank you for what you guys do. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, one of the reasons I really got uh, this Patreon membership was so either one of you would see it. Uh, where do I begin? First off, uh, I don't really care if this ends up in a video. It's mainly for you. Um, that being said, you guys have really helped me out inadvertently. Being a 27-year-old guy whose life always seems to be falling apart, but having the ability to watch what you guys do and be part of your lives helps tremendously. Uh, you guys and Nick, Nick Nocturnal, shout out, uh, helped me find music again and find my friends again. Bros going from the military to being in a relationship to having a lot of that crash in front of you, but being able to be lifted up by just the genuine content that's pushed out is a lifesaver on top of that. You guys seem like, uh, guys that I would genuinely vibe and get along with. Hell yeah. Uh, maybe in another life we could have been boys. Keep putting out what you put out and keep being inspirations. Uh, it actually helps people from teens to vets like me to the old crusty fucks still hanging <laughs> around. Um, Jared inspired me to pick up guitar again and Austin's goofy ass inspired me to learn how to screen. Thanks guys. Cheers and keep it up. Oh, that was really nice. That was, yeah. that was such a beautiful, beautiful message thanks for sharing that with us but yeah. we could uh, bring you some some joy teach you how to laugh again teach, oh, yeah. teach you how to love again yeah it's very nice thank I, you it, it is one thing that like i've always enjoyed about doing this show is that it genuinely seems like we have like such a cool connection with the community of people that watch us mm -hmm. like it doesn't it, like, you know, like sometimes you do content and it just like it feels like content it feels like, oh, this is content. When we do a lot of the Dickie Dine stuff, it's like, this just feels like we're kicking it. Right, yeah. Like we were just talking about. Which is about. very welcoming to watch because then you're yeah. like, I'm also kicking it. Yeah, I want to just hang it. Like even if the cameras weren't rolling, we would be 
doing yeah, similar that's why, things. That's, that's like how we started the channel. <laughs> it's like yeah. we should, we're just like funny together. We should just film. <laughs> should I just put up a camera and just see what happens? Yeah. Um, but no, that was very, very nice of you to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who would have um, thought such a sweet thing would come from such a hard name? Blade. He is the blade. Oh, don't oh, sing it. I am the blade. <laughs> Um, this one comes from, uh, Jacob Batelli who says, Hey guys, hope y'all are well. I was seeing if you had any advice for me. I try my best for networking within music and there are a couple of great contacts I've made, but I live in a place where there is a market for music, but not a lot of venues and not too much of a scene. Are there any better ways to meet more musicians that aren't local to me or to reach farther out of my area? Um, this question we get asked a lot. So this is a great question. I always say the very similar answer and that's go to local shows. Mm-hmm. If you it, like, he says there's not many venues. So maybe that is a limited thing, but regardless of like what kind of show it is, like if you're looking for like a rock musician or a metal musician, if there's even like open mic nights in certain like bars or something, I don't know, talk to people and, and like put it out there that, you know, Oh, Hey, I play this, I play that, or I sing or whatever. Like if you know anyone, mm-hmm. like give people your number, have maybe like even a card, which is kind of weird, but you know, just talk to people and like network that way because you'll find, cause it's very easy to post on Facebook. It's very easy to post in forums, but you find people that are hours away or States away. It's like, well, you want to find local people. You have to go to your local community. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, the alternative is just the Facebook groups, but it's, it's a lot of times it is just like, Oh, I'm in Jersey. I wish I could make it work. (laughs) You're like, well, yeah, I guess that was, I'm finding cool people, but I'm not really finding local people I can work with. So yeah, I guess, I don't know, you, you could also try to develop like an online thing so that touring makes sense outside of your city or yeah. some, I know some bands will, they'll go to a, a market they're not familiar with and try to like befriend the bands and then they'll try to trade markets kind of thing. Mm, like, yeah. hey, we'll, you know, you guys can open a show for us in our hometown. We'll open a show for you in your hometown and we can kind of feed each other's markets. Right. Stuff like that is a... Uh, gone on for since the dawn of time oh yeah i mean footwork mm-hmm. put, put in footwork it's and when you're getting off the ground just doing it in person i think is it's okay to use social media too it's okay to, to post stuff you know you might find someone who knows put it out there but put it out there in the real world mm-hmm. too it Go. shows more good faith too like i'd yeah. probably be more likely to believe you if you said yeah. it to me in person than like another message on facebook right. or something right hey if you're ever looking for a guitar player hey if you're ever looking for a drummer i i play you know like here's my number like shoot me a text or whatever like sure maybe they won't but maybe they will and then you are at a band practice and mm-hmm. you're hanging out with some dudes and you had a band so yeah, just getting your name in that network and yeah. help a lot 100 percent um this one comes from daniel will wilging wilging he says uh what's up boys hope all is well i was wondering if you guys had any interest in uploading the podcasts on either spotify or apple podcasts being as i would love to listen to the podcast while i'm driving or working i have no idea how the process of uploading podcasts on those platforms works so if it costs money just regard my idea although i wanted to ask funny you should mention it because the Dickie Dines podcast is now available anywhere that you can stream Set podcasts. That's an alley oop right there. Spotify, I believe Apple, Google, your there, mom's radio station. There's a few others, I'm pretty sure. Kevin. Yeah, there's some obscure websites they're on too. So yeah. we've got it all covered for all anyone covered. and everyone. Mm-hmm. It's all covered. We are everywhere. So if you want to listen to the Dickie Dines podcast on another platform, Audio only because Spotify is weird with video podcast. It's, it's yeah, kind it's of a difficult a thing. thing to do. Um, but uh, yeah, audio only podcasts available stream everywhere. And of course, we will always continue to do the video podcasts here on the YouTube Dickie Dines channel. But yes, it is available everywhere. Thank you so much for your question because we actually just did that. And yeah. so we needed to we need to talk about that. Um so yeah, I, uh, that's that's pretty much all we got for today from the patrons uh, for the after show. We really do appreciate everyone that uh, helps us out over there. It really does help. If you want to join us on Patreon.com, you can get uh, early access. You can get extra content. You can get all all kinds of perks. So uh, link in the description below for that if you want to check it out. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching this podcast. And we will have many more to come. Yeah. Lord willing. Peace out, come scouts. See you later. Check out uh, No One Will Save You on Hulu. Let me know what you think. 
Wait, what is that? It's like an alien movie that came oh. out recently. It's nice. pretty fun. Okay. 